What kicks this list off on a promising start? This codex is believed to give the reader the ability to harness evil and negative energy. Nice, we love that. The book is commonly referred to as the Devil's Bible which in my opinion has a better ring to it. First discovered in 1648, the codex itself is massive. It's 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and nine inches thick. Just like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The thing is just stacked, so thick. It weighs 165 pounds, so you can't just, you know, put it in your backpack and go about your day. It's not going anywhere. It's said that this book was actually written by a monk, but this monk had broken his spiritual vows. And by doing so, he was of course punished. He was sealed behind a wall and then left there forever. Horrible way to go nonetheless, but right before his untimely departure, he realized he wouldn't be able to finish said book. So he called for backup. He called upon Lucifer. Yeah, that's a big... Yikes, we don't do that there. So afterwards, the book became immensely cursed, and it's now said that the book is filled with dark rituals, and even instructions on how to perform exorcisms, plus, you know, a few creepy drawings of the devil and other demons. We love that. It doubles down as a coloring book. Nice, hope you have lots of red. Right now, it's said the book has 310 pages, but it once used to have 320. Yeah, those 10 pages that were ripped out were said to contain instructions on how someone could summon the devil. So, whoever has those 10 pages, Hope you didn't lose them. Good game, burn those immediately, please. Number nine, The Grand Grimoire. Again, I'll admit this one's a catchier title. In a world where we can figure out how to do anything online, and I mean anything, even fixing a sink with ramen, God forbid you need to do that, there you go. While the author of this book is still unknown, the contents of it are of course filled with black magic, dark spells, secrets of the underworld, all that horrible stuff. It's believed that the book was written sometime around 1521 and it's now split into two books. Oh, wow, even back in the 1500s we had cliffhangers. Awesome, no spoilers. Book one details instructions on how to summon a demon and how to get the demon to do your bidding. The second book is split into two parts and it contains details on how to make a pact with the demon and how to command the spirit, but with less tools, which means that it's, you know, significantly riskier than the instructions in the first book. It's like, here's how to make a car. And now here's how to summon a car. You know what I mean? It's a little fishier in this one. The book describes a few different demons and it also gives spells that one can do. Not haunting things, but you know, nicer, I guess. Like winning the lottery, love spells, becoming invisible, superpowers, I guess, both good and evil. While those spells certainly sound nicer, magic like that always comes at a cost, right? We've seen Hocus Pocus. We've seen WandaVision, right? We've seen all the bad stuff, bad examples with witches. We can't have what we want all the time, okay? Leave the Grand Grimoire at your local library. Number eight, the Book of Soiga, AKA the Book of Death. Okay, this one sounds promising already. Nobody knows what language it's written in, so right off the bat, it's haunting. But it appears the first part of the book details different spells and incantations of some sort. Then the ending gets fishy. That's when many of our questions come into play here. All the letters in this final part are written in separate boxes, and despite people trying their absolute best, it's impossible to decipher. Yeah, not even Tom Hanks can do it, and he was in the Da Vinci Code, so. An old scholar named John Dee attempted to decode the book and he apparently called upon an angel named Uriel for help. The angel explained to him then that only the archangel Michael is able to interpret said text. So that's the mystery the whole time. It's only for angel eyes, my friend. Apparently after John Dee passed away, this book mysteriously just vanished. It was never to be seen again after 1608 until the 19th century. That's when it magically reappeared again. Somehow, we don't know how, but it's just, there it is again. Where it went for so long, we have no idea. But if you lay your eyes on this book, well, you'll die around three years later, so moving on. Coming in at number seven, we have the Voynich Manuscript. Who knows what is happening and what is contained within the text of the Voynich Manuscript? The text is regularly alluded to as the world's most mysterious book. Written in the early 15th century, what the 240 page cryptic text actually says is still a mystery and it has baffled humans for 600 years. It appears to be written in an unknown language and contains strange illustrations and diagrams. The book has been passed down from emperors and important members of society, eventually falling into the hands of a Polish book dealer. A 2006 book by Nicholas Pelling claims that the text is cursed. Others think that it was secretly dropped on earth by aliens. There are hopes that Canadian computer scientists may have invented a machine that will be able to decode 
decode the enigmatic text. Who knows what we'll discover? Almost as intriguing as what the text said is who or what wrote it. We still don't know. Coming into number six, we have the Codex Gygas. The Codex is a hefty old chap weighing 165 pounds, so more than me. The text heralds from the 12th century and is referred to as the Devil's Bible. Why? Well, according to the legend, the monk who wrote the text had broken his vow and was due to be walled to death. So, what actually happens when somebody's walled to death? Oh, it's a bit like being buried alive, but instead you're bricked up in a wall, like in a really, really small space until until you run out of air and die in the wall. Really not ideal. In fact, I feel like it happens in an episode of Jonathan Creek, so if anyone watches that, shout out to you. Anyway, the night before his death, he wanted to create a book on all human knowledge, but he realized that, you know what, that's actually not a long time to write a book. He summoned Lucifer and asked him to finish it for him in exchange for his already damned soul. Apparently this is why there's a picture of the devil in the manuscript. But it's not just any picture, it's a 19 inch tall picture. So, a text Text written by the devil, surely no good can come from reading it. Coming into number five, we have the Book of Soiger. The Book of Soiger is an early 16th century treatise on demonology written in Latin. There are only two copies of the book in the world, and one was possessed by Elizabethan scholar John Dee, who spent his life trying to interpret the text. Basically, the text is filled with spells and rituals, and it's kind of creepy. He had a pretty good grasp of what was happening, except for the final 36 pages, which he simply couldn't decipher. He and his trusted friend Edward Kelly summoned the spirit Uriel to tell them the meaning of the last pages. Now the legend says that Uriel possessed Kelly and spoke through him. He claimed that the book came into existence when Adam entered paradise and that it could only be properly interpreted by Archangel Michael himself. He also said that whoever does decipher the meaning of the final 36 pages will be destined to die two and a half years after they do so. Coming into number four, we have the prophecies of Nostradamus. Did Nostradamus curse us, or were his texts a warning? The 16th century French physician wrote a collection of 942 poetic prophecies, many of which have come true. A lot of people think that these quatrains were, like his grave, cursed. If he had the power to curse his grave, why wouldn't his poetry be cursed? Nostradamus famously prophesied the Great Fire of London, the death of King Henry II, the French Revolution, vaccination, the rise of Hitler, the atomic bombs, 9-11 and more. We just don't know what they are yet. Reading these texts may not curse you, but then again, knowledge of a terrible event without the ability to change the outcome must be a great curse indeed. Coming into number three, we have The Great Omar. The Francis Sangorsky special edition of The Great Omar is for sure cursed. Not only was the original one of the most blinging books around, it seemed to be on the receiving end of some seriously bad juju. Emblazoned with gold leaf, gemstones, and peacock feathers, the original copy of The Great Omar sank on board the Titanic and is lost somewhere in the North Atlantic Ocean. Sangorski then died just six weeks later as he drowned in an accident in the English Channel. A second copy was made by Stanley Bray, recreating the original. Now that copy was destroyed in the London Blitz. A third copy was then painstakingly recreated by Bray once again, who died just five years later. When asked about the book's tragic history, Bray said, I'm not in the least bit superstitious, even though they do say that the peacock is a symbol of disaster. I'll say. Now the only surviving copy now lays in the British Library. Visit, if you dare. This isn't a book up next, but it is a poem which really is just kind of a short lyrical book. Now I'm not sure you're ready for this, but people who read this poem are doomed to die. In at number two, we have Tomino's Hell. I know that all men must die and all of that, but Tomino's Hell is said to speed the process way up. The poem is a 1919 Japanese work of literature that is cursed, 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 and cursed again. It's supposed to cause death and tragedy if you read it aloud, so just don't do it. The poem tells the story of a young boy's damnation, his sickness as he vomits blood, and travels to the blackest of hells. Lovely jubbly. It isn't just Japanese readers who need to be a bit worried. The poem has been translated into English. Now, reading the poem is fine, feel free, even though it is kind of gross. What you don't want to do, though, is read it aloud in any language, unless, you know, well, just actually don't do it. Finally, at number one, we have one of the most cursed and spooky books in the entire history of print. We have the Grand Grimoire. The Grand Grimoire is often referred to as the Gospel of Satan or the Red Dragon Text. And it is 
the Book of Spells believed to possess insane powers, but beyond that, it's said to be one of the most intense and potent occult books in existence. Written in the 16th century, the Incantation Book tells the reader how to summon the dead, and also how to summon powerful demons. Deeper sections of the book allegedly tell the reader how to do a deal with the devil. The book was said to be written by a man who was possessed by Satan. Now, the original text is so dangerous that it is allegedly held in storage by the Vatican secret archives. The book is so mysterious and famous that it is frequently referenced in pop culture. Number 10 Untitled Grimoires The Untitled Grimoires is a set of two handwritten, spiral bound spell books that were sold by an online retailer for nearly $14,000 back in 2013. The books were handwritten in the 1960s by Persephone Adjostri Irene, a high priestess of Wicca who supposedly led her own coven. All 250 pages are filled with incantations, spells, enchantments, and details on how to summon spirits and demons. However, there is a serious catch. The seller warns buyers that any non believers who mess with the book would bring a deadly curse upon themselves, while Persephone herself tells readers on the first First page that proceeding with the book would have serious consequences. She wrote, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further, or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. The buyer and the location of the book is currently unknown, but my question is why would you want to buy this? Even if you are a believer, wouldn't you still be scared? Number 9 Necronomicon. The Necro Necronomicon, also referred to as the Book of the Dead, is considered one of the most haunted books of all time. What does this book have in store? Well, you can find scary figures on each page of this book and you can contact your loved ones who are not alive. It contains the exact way to contact the dead souls, but be warned, bringing back the dead is not for the weak. Necronomicon has also appeared in famous series like Friday the 13th and Evil Dead series. Currently, its original copy is kept in a lock of Massachusetts Masonic University. People really don't want this book to get out, so it has to be haunted, right? Number 8 the Orphan Story. We all know it can be hard to get a book published. I mean, hey, the Harry Potter transcript was denied 12 different times. But this book took 400 years to get published. The Orphan Story was written in the early 1600s by Martin de Leon Cardenas. The Orphan Story is a novel about a 14 year old Spaniard who heads to the Americas in search of fortune. Now, this sounds like a fairly normal, feel good adventure story, but a major darkness lurks within it. Its pages that led to the novel not being published until 2018. Belinda Palikios, a prover and scholar who edited the book for two years, says that she was warned by multiple people about the orphan story. They told her that the book was cursed and the reason it had taken so long to publish was that anyone who worked on it would die in mysterious ways. While she initially laughed it off, research showed that those who previously edited the book died in horrific car accidents or of strange illnesses. My question is, why did she still agree to edit it? And did certain powers not want the ancient script out in the world? Nonetheless, it was published in 2018, and since then, Belinda remains alive and well, so hopefully the curse is gone, but I still wouldn't want to read this book though. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Untitled Grimoires, a witch's spell book should never be messed with. I feel like that should be obvious, but I'll put that out there because apparently it isn't. The Untitled Grimoires are a set of handwritten spell books that were sold online for $14,000 in 2013. The books were written in the 1960s by a high priestess of Wicca who was the leader of a coven, and they detail things like spells, incantations, enchantments, and instructions on summoning spirits and demons. So. Which stuff. This is all fine and well unless you're sitting there thinking about how you don't believe. If you are a non-believer, it is best to stay as far away as possible from these books. The seller of the books warned that any non-believers who mess with the book will bring upon themselves a deadly curse, and on the first page of the book, the Wiccan herself wrote that proceeding with the book may have serious consequences. It reads, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution. 
retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hands of the craft. I think we can all appreciate the heads up she gave us on this one. Again, this is just another one I'll probably stay far away from, and not just because I don't have $14,000 to spend on a pair of books. Coming in at number 6 we have The Catcher in the Rye. This book has been linked to a number of murders. It's believed that the book might have inspired these killings. First we have John Lennon. When John Lennon was shot by Mark David Chapman, apparently he calmly sat down on the curb and started flipping through The Catcher in the Rye as he waited for the police. In fact, inside the book it was later discovered he wrote, and I quote, to Holden Caulfield from Holden Caulfield. This is my statement. And he signed it Holden's name, who is the main character of the book. Furthermore, when police arrested him, he said, and I quote, I'm sure the big part of me is Holden. The small part of me must be the devil. And during his trial, he even read from the book when it was his turn to address the court. But he's not the only one that's been influenced by this book. After John Hinckley Jr.'s assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, it was discovered he too was a fan of the book, and a copy was even found on the table in his hotel room. And lastly, let's talk about Robert John Bardo. He took the life of Rebecca Schaefer. Well, he had the book in his back pocket while he did the deed. The list goes on and on. There are a dozen more people that apparently got inspired by this book and went on to harm or take someone's life. So some people believe that this book is in fact cursed and will drive the same insane. In our number 5 spot today we have the Book of the Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage. When you're a practitioner of magic, you probably don't give the same sort of gifts that non-magic folk do. So it is no surprise that Abramelin gifted his son a book of spells and curses. In the early 1900s, this book was translated into English, and ever since then, there have been rumors swirling that the book is cursed, which makes a ton of sense considering, like I mentioned, it is a book of curses. Rumor has it that the cursed nature of this book, in part, has to do with Abramelin's belief that everyone has their own personal demon. The book holds instructions on how to to get your demons under control through rituals and supernatural situations, and it is always risky to reach out to the spirit world, so maybe that's why everyone is feeling like this book is cursed. It's looking like unless you absolutely know what you're doing, the contents of this book just might be too powerful. Those who have had bad experiences with the book explain either bad luck or hauntings from the spirit world are what await for those who dare to read it. Coming in at number 4 we have the Devil's Bible. The Devil's Bible, otherwise known as the Codex Gigas, is this massive 310 page book said to harness evil and negative energy. It was discovered in 1648 and is 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, 8.7 inches thick and weighs 165 pounds. So now there's this really creepy legend surrounding it. Legend goes that the book was written by a monk, but this monk broke his spiritual vows and his his punishment was to be sealed behind a brick wall and left to die. The night before his death, he realized he wouldn't be able to finish this book. So he summoned Lucifer and asked him to complete it for him. In return, he offered him his soul. So legend goes that this book was finished by the devil himself. To make things creepier, this book is filled with drawings of the devil and other demonic entities. On one page, there's a 19 inch frightening drawing of Satan. And apparently, the book also contains a bunch of dark rituals and facts like how to perform exorcisms. To top it all off, apparently, at some point, the book contained 320 pages, not just 310. Those 10 pages were ripped out because they instructed people on how to summon the devil. And thank gosh for that. In our number 3 spot today we have the Book of Soiga. This one is often referred to as the Book of Death, and that alone is enough to deter me. If you happen to be braver than I, unfortunately it is unlikely that you'll be able to actually read parts of this book because nobody knows what language it is written in. While the first part of the book details different spells and incantations, the ending part is the most mysterious and where the secrets lie. All the letters in the final part are written in separate boxes, and despite people trying their absolute best, it is extremely difficult to decide. An Elizabethan scholar named John Dee attempted to decode the book, and he apparently called on an angel named Uriel for help. The angel explained to him that only the archangel Michael is able to interpret the text. Apparently after John Dee passed away, this book mysteriously vanished, seemingly into thin air. This was in 1608, and for years and years no one could find it until it magically reappeared again in the 19th century. I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounds like some real magic. The catch with this one, however, is that it is said that whoever deciphers the meaning of the code will inevitably die two and a half years later. So I guess this is like the ring of books? 
In our second spot, we have the Prophecies of Nostradamus. We've talked about this dude a bunch on this channel. Basically, he's a really famous seer and prophet. He's most famous for his book, Les Prophecies, which contains hundreds of predictions for future events. And what's scary is that a bunch of these predictions have come true, such as JFK's assassination, the creation of the atomic bomb, rain, and the Great Fire of London, so on and so on. So he's got some credibility. But here's the thing. Are these actually predictions, or are they a list of curses Nostradamus set out for us? A number of people think that it's the second option, and that he literally has cursed us all. He has made these things happen even from beyond the grave. In fact, he managed to curse his grave, so what says he doesn't have the power to curse a book too? Like literally he warned everyone, whoever opens my tomb will be cursed. And guess what? Legend goes that one day during a war, a couple of soldiers accidentally dug up his grave. When they did, they found him with a plaque that said 1793 on it. That was the year they opened the grave. So he predicted when his grave would be disturbed. Not only that, one of the soldiers picked up his skull and immediately was shot dead by a sniper. So yeah, the soldiers were cursed by him and now we're all cursed by him and this book. In our number one spot today, we have The Grand Grimoire. This book is often referred to as the book with incredible power and has been called one of the darkest books in the world. While the author of this book is still unknown, the contents of it are things like black magic and dark, spooky secrets. It is believed that the book was written sometime around 1521 and it is split into two books. Book one details instructions on how to summon a demon and how to get the demon to do your bidding. The second book is split into two parts and it details how to make a pact with a demon and how to command the spirit but with less tools which means it is significantly riskier than the instructions in the first book. Apparently in the book it even details how someone can call upon Lucifer or the devil. The book describes a few different demons and it also gives spells that one can do for things like winning the lottery, love spells, becoming invisible, you know. While those spells certainly sound nice, magic like that always comes at a cost. People fear the grand grimoire because they worry that if anyone reads it fully, then the devil will enslave their soul. No thank you. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Lesser Key of Solomon. This is a grimoire that is said to be cursed. It is said to contain spells that are used for summoning over 72 different demons, and just to add a little air of mystery, no one is exactly sure who wrote it. This is because the book is made up of a few different texts that have been compiled from somewhere around the 17th century. This book is said to be so cursed that even just having a copy of it will cause the owner to either experience constant bad luck or have the worst luck of all with power passing away. People have shared their terrifying stories with the book and they include the book's pages turning on their own and another person shared that the book violently flew itself across the room at them. How terrifying would that be? While we aren't sure who wrote it, there are rumors or stories that suggest it might have been King Solomon. It is said that perhaps he wrote it for his son and then asked him to bury it with him in his grave. When being prepared for burial, a group of Babylonian philosophers found the book and this is when they were visited by an angel who told them to hide the book from the unworthy. They then placed a spell on the book which was meant to keep it from getting into the wrong hands and that is said to be how the book got its curse. In our number 9 spot today we have the untitled grimoires. A witch's spell book should never be messed with. I feel like that should be obvious, but I'll put that out there because apparently it isn't. The Untitled Grimoires are a set of handwritten spell books that were sold online for $14,000 in 2013. The books were written in the 1960s by a high priestess of Wicca who was the leader of a coven, and they detail things like spells, incantations, enchantments, and instructions on summoning spirits and demons. So, witch stuff. This is all fine and well unless you're sitting here thinking about how you don't believe. If you are a non-believer, it is best to stay as far away as possible from these books. The seller of the books warned that any non-believers who mess with the book will bring upon themselves a deadly curse, and on the first page of the book, the Wiccan herself wrote that proceeding with the book may have serious consequences. It reads, quote, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further, or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. That's a pretty sound warning, and one I probably wouldn't just roll the dice on. You know, just to be safe. 
In our number 8 spot today we have The Sorrows of Young Werther. We've got a lot of books on this list that are said to contain magic and spells, and this one is a little different from the others on this list because it doesn't. This is a book that came out in 1774, and it is said to have had a large and negative impact on its readers since its release. Apparently after this book came out, a huge wave of its readers ended up taking their own lives because of this strange and dark influence it had on those who read it. Young men would start trying to emulate the main character of the book by dressing like him, acting like him, that sort of thing, before following his horrifying actions in the book. This actually led to the book being banned in some countries, and for the most part, I'm pretty opposed to the banning of books, but I feel like this is one I can probably get behind. It is believed that even people who were in a completely fine headspace prior to reading the book would still be tempted to follow the dark path after reading it, which is exactly what has led people to believe that this book is cursed. Number 7. Long Lost Friend Long Lost Friend was written and published by John George Homan in 1820. The book contains a variety of folk remedies, spells, and talismans from the folk magic tradition known as powwow. While the book itself is intended to not be cursed, as it contains wonderful and well-tested remedies and arts for men, as well as livestock, according to its original German title, the book took on a sinister reputation following the so-called Hex Hollow murder committed by John Bleemer, John Curry, and Wilbert Hess. The three men broke into the home of their neighbor, Nelson Raymeyer, because they said he had put a curse on them. They were trying to find his copy of The Long Lost Friend and destroy it in order to end their affliction. They were unable to find it though, so they instead took Nelson's life and attempted to burn down his house. Which, you know, just seems like the most logical explanation to me. I I don't know about you guys. But apparently, Nelson's supposed copy of the book never turned up. Did he even have the book, or did it work in his favor all along? Only Nelson knows. Number 6. The Grand Grimoire The Grand Grimoire, nicknamed the Gospel of Satan, isn't really a book I want to read. And I think a lot of people wouldn't want to read it due to this either. This book is said to be written by a man possessed by the devil. The 16th century book is known as one of the most terrifying occult books in existence. It contains dark incantations and instructions on how to summon demons and raise spirits from the dead. Now that last part may seem appealing to those who are grieving or suffering loss, but this book's dark reputation makes it one of the most fearful medieval manuscripts of all time. Even opening the book is considered equivalent to selling your soul to the devil. Thankfully, the Grand Grimoire is not available for purchase due to this, and I mean who would want to buy that? It's said that the original copy is currently kept in the Vatican secret archives and not currently available to the public, and I think that's a good call. Number 5. The Book of Soiga, aka Aldrilia Sieve Soiga Vorkar. I hope I said that right. Now, knowledge has no enemy other than ignorance, says Jane Cupin, translator of the Book of Soiga. It's also known as the book that… so… There's that. It is a 16th century essay written in Latin about demonology. Only two material copies of the Book of Soiga are said to exist. One was rediscovered in the British Library in 1994, and the other was owned by the scholar John Dee, who devoted his entire life to decoding it. John was forewarned that anyone who deciphers the final 36 pages is fated to die within two and a half years. Thankfully for John, he was never able to fully decipher its true meaning. Currently, John's book can be found at the Bolidian Library, Oxford, and there are now digital copies of this book freely available to download, which I suggest you don't do, no matter how curious you are. Number 4. The Book of Sacred Magic of Abrielin the Mage Abrielin was a strange father to say the least. Appropriate presents for children are toys, candy, not a book full of mythical curses. But that's exactly what he gave his son. Hey, even a normal book would have been fine, but but a cursed one? No way. Since it was translated to English in the 1900s, this 15th century novel has had a reputation for being cursed. There are several theories why, but most believe it has to do with the mage's belief that everyone has their own unique personal demon. Yeah. Throughout this book, readers could learn rituals that bring their personal demons under control. They could learn to perform supernatural feats using sigils of magic words on a grid, but this book has a huge downside. It's believed that anyone with a copy in their possession will be haunted by spirits from another realm. They will also experience terrible luck that will ultimately bring about their demise. Now, paranormal enthusiasts know that it's risky to reach out and communicate with the spirit world, especially when it comes to demons, so it's not surprising that readers 
readers of this book have reported bad luck and hauntings by spirits from another realm. Number 3. The Codex Gigas The Codex Gigas was published in the early 13th century and is written in Latin. The Codex Gigas is a bible written in a monastery in Bohemia, modern day Czech Republic. It's also referred to as the Devil's Bible due to a fully colored portrait of Satan taking up a whole page. And when I say a whole page, I mean a full 36 inch page. Yes, this is the largest illustrated medieval manuscript in the world with a length of 36 inches, a width of 20 inches, and a total back to back thickness of almost 9 inches. Wow. <laughs> the page next to the illustration contains a full description of the kingdom of heaven. Now, there are lots of stories about this book, most likely stemming from the large portrait of the devil. According to the legend, the codex was written by Herman the Recluse, a monk who broke his monastic vow and was sent sentence to be walled up alive. In order to try and escape his dire fate, he promised to write a book that would glorify the monastery forever, a book that contained the entire knowledge of the universe. Herman the Recluse was given one try to complete the book, and if he hadn't finished it by dawn, the sentence would be executed. Realizing by midnight that the task was impossible, Herman turned to the devil, who helped him finish the book for the price of his soul. Some say that Satan's portrait is his own signature, while others believe that Herman drew the portrait himself as a thanks. Number 2. Lesser Key of Solomon The Lesser Key of Solomon is a cursed grimoire of demonology. No one knows the author responsible for it. We don't even know when it was written, but best guesses point to it starting out as several separate texts that later came together in the 17th century. The book contains passages on how to conjure spirits of the dead and demons and how to control these entities to do your bidding. Topics like how to become invisible and locate missing or stolen items are covered, recipes for love potions, and liquor of persuasion are also scattered throughout the book. For centuries, the book has been followed by rumors that it's cursed with a spell so dark and anyone who has a copy of the book on their shelf will face certain doom. The curse doesn't specify what will happen if you own a copy, but I wouldn't risk it. Those who have owned it have reported strange occurrences like pages turning on their own and books violently flying across the room. Strange whispers and shadow creatures have also been reported by owners of the manual. I would not want a copy of this. And coming in at number one, the Voyage Manuscript. If humans are afraid of one thing, it's the unknown, and that's why the Voyage Manuscript has become one of the most mysterious and feared books of all time. Written in the 15th century, there are 240 pages, but there's evidence that additional pages are missing. Some pages are foldable sheets of varying sizes, and most of the pages have fantastical illustrations or diagrams, some crudely colored with sections of the manuscript showing people, fictitious plants, and astrological symbols. This has frustrated and cursed people with bad luck for years. While countless historians and researchers such as professional and amateur cryptographers, including American and British codebreakers from both World War I and World War II have tried to crack the code, none have been successful. The manuscript has never been deciphered and none of the many hypotheses proposed over the last hundred years have been independently verified. The mystery of its meaning and origin has excited the popular imagination, making it the subject of study and speculation. Was it written by people from another country, an unknown species, aliens? No one knows, but it's been long speculated that a fatal curse will be unleashed on anybody who finally unlocks this terrifying language. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Codex Gigas. This book is said to give the reader the ability to harness evil and negative energy and is also often referred to as the Devil's Bible. The book was first discovered in 1648 and is massive at 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide and 8.7 inches thick. And here's what's weird. It weighs 165 pounds. It is said that this book was actually written by a monk, but this monk had broken his spiritual vows. He was of course punished, but in a pretty extreme way, which was to be sealed behind a wall and then left there to die. Right before his passing, he realized he wouldn't be able to finish the book, which is when he summoned Lucifer and asked him to complete it for him. If I knew you could do that, I would have summoned Lucifer to finish all of my book reports in school. I guess I probably wouldn't have been cool with the whole 
whole like selling your soul thing though. It is said that this book is filled with dark rituals, instructions on how to perform exorcisms, as well as a bunch of creepy drawings of the devil and other demons. Right now it is said that this book has 310 pages, but that it once used to be 320. The 10 pages that were ripped out were said to contain instructions on how someone could summon the devil, so hopefully whoever has those 10 pages destroyed them right away. In our number 9 spot today we have the untitled grimoires. A witch's spell book should never be messed with, but I feel like that should be obvious, but I'll put that out there because apparently it isn't. The untitled grimoires are a set of handwritten spell books that were sold online for $1400 in 2013. The books were written in the 1960s by a high priestess of Wicca who was the leader of a coven and they detailed things like spells, incantations, enchantments, and instructions on summoning spirits and demons. So witch stuff. This is all fine and well unless you're sitting there thinking about how you don't believe. If you are a non-believer, it is best to stay as far away as possible from these books. The seller of the books warns that any non-believers who mess with the book will bring upon themselves a deadly curse, and on the first page, the Wiccan herself wrote that proceeding with the book may have serious consequences. It reads, quote, to those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. It's a pretty sound warning and one I probably wouldn't roll the dice on. You know, just to be safe. In our number 8 spot today we have the Picatrix. This is a grimoire that is said to contain a large amount of magic that is presumed to be from the 11th century. This text has long been considered pretty obscene because of the graphic content that exists within the book. The pages contain some scholarly work with philosophy, astrology, and even some medieval science which is actually pretty cool. But then there are things like recipes for concoctions that involve mixing human and animal blood, brains, urine, and other bodily fluid in with opium or other kind of dangerous substances. While some of what this book contains is definitely historically interesting, I think it's probably best to stay away from the magic and spells that lurk within. In our number 7 spot today we have the Picatrix. This is a grimoire that is said to contain a large amount of magic that is presumed to be from the 11th century. This text has long been considered pretty obscene because of the graphic content that exists within it. The pages contain some scholarly work with philosophy, astrology, and even some medieval science, which is actually pretty cool. But then there are things like recipes for concoctions that involve mixing human and animal blood, brains, urine, and other bodily fluids in with or other kinds of dangerous substances. The results are said to be magical, but I am far from convinced. This one definitely isn't the darkest or the spookiest on this list today, which is a nice refresher, and while some of what this book contains is definitely historically interesting, I think it's probably best to stay away from the magic and spells that lurk within. In our number 6 spot today we have the Book of the Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage. This book was of course created by Abramelin, who was indeed a mage, and he created it as a gift for his son. At the time his son was probably Probably like, um, a book for my birthday? Thanks, I guess. Books are intimidating. Like, no one really liked Holes the first time they read it. Actually, that's a lie. That's still one of the best books I've ever read. But I bet his son was like Harry Potter with a Half-Blood Prince potions textbook, you know? At first you don't really know what to make of it, but that stuff comes in handy later. Anyway, in the early 1900s, this book was translated into English, and that is when the rumors of the book being cursed began to spread. I mean, this book contained spells, but it also contained curses, so I feel like that rumor likely makes a lot of sense. It is said that this rumor has to do with Abramelin's belief that everyone has their own personal demon. I'm just hoping that mine is cool and nice. The good thing about this book, however, is that it holds instructions on how to get your demon under control through rituals and supernatural situations, but then the kicker with this is that it is always exceptionally risky to reach out to the spirit world, so maybe that's why everyone was feeling like this book is cursed. It's looking like unless you absolutely know what you're doing, the contents of this book just might be too powerful. Those who have had bad experiences with the book explained either bad luck or hauntings from the spirit world are what a wait for those who dare to read it. In our number 5 spot today we have the Book of Black Magic and Pacts. This book, written by A.E. Waite, is an exhaustive guide to all things occult. It looks at lore, magic, occultist history, and ceremonies. There's certainly no issue with this itself, but when in the wrong hands, things can certainly get a little dicey, especially considering this book has been referred to as one of the greatest overviews of occultism, and it includes a large number of magical spells from a variety of sources. This book is said to also contain rituals of transcendental magic and rituals of black magic. The author of this book, A.E. Waite, 
Knight is said to have been a British scholarly mystic as well as a poet, and it is said that he was quite a prolific writer on both occult and esoteric matters. In our number four spot today, we have the Codex Gigas. This book is said to give the reader the ability to harness evil and negative energy, and is also often referred to as the Devil's Bible. This book was first discovered in 1648 and is massive at 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and 8.7 inches thick. And here's what's weird. It weighs 165 pounds. It is said that this book was actually written by a monk, but this monk had broken his spiritual vows. He was of course punished, but in a pretty extreme way, which was to be sealed behind a wall and then left there to die. Right before his passing, he realized he wouldn't be able to finish the book, which is when he then summoned Lucifer and asked him to complete it for him. If I knew you could do that, I would have summoned Lucifer to finish all my book reports in school. I guess I probably wouldn't have been cool with the whole selling your soul thing though. It is said that this book is filled with dark rituals, instructions on how to perform exorcisms, as well as a bunch of creepy drawings of the devil and other demons. Right now it is said that this book has 310 pages, but that it once used to have 320. The 10 pages that were ripped out were said to contain instructions on how someone could summon the devil, so hopefully whoever had those 10 pages destroyed them right away. In our number three spot today, we have the Grand Grimoire. This book is often referred to as the book with incredible power and has been called one of the darkest books in the world. While the author of this book is still unknown, the contents of it are things like black magic and dark, spooky secrets. It is believed that the book was written sometime around 1521, and it is split into two books. Book one details instructions on how to summon a demon and how to get the demon to do your bidding. The second book is split into two parts, and it details how to make a pact with a demon and how to command the spirit, but with less tools, which means it is significantly riskier than the instructions in the first book. Apparently in the book it even details how someone can call upon Lucifer or the devil, so I guess who needs those 10 missing pages in the Codex Gigas? Just go out and get the Grand Grimoire and you're right back in the devil summoning game, no worries. The book describes a few different demons and it also gives spells that one can do for things like winning the lottery, love spells, becoming invisible, you know, magic stuff. While those spells certainly sound nice, magic like that always comes at a cost. People fear the Grand Grimoire because they worry that if anyone reads it fully, then the devil will enslave their soul. No thank you. In our number two spot today, we have the Book of Soiga. Anything that is referred to as the Book of Death is definitely one I'll most likely spend some time trying to stay away from. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that is the least inviting thing I've ever heard in my life. If you don't agree with me on that sentiment, however, the tough thing with this one is that nobody knows exactly what language it is written in. The beginning part of the book definitely contains some spells and incantations. The ending of the book really is where the most mystery lies, and trying to decipher it is no easy task. It is said that a scholar named John Dee once attempted to decode the secret book, and it was so difficult that he needed to call on the angel Uriel for help. Even the angel didn't have the answers, and instructed John to call on the archangel Michael, who would be the only one who was able to interpret the text. Here's where this mystery book gets more mysterious, though. After John Dee passed away in 1608, the book basically just vanished, and no one knew where it went, but then, like magic, it just reappears in the 19th century. Despite this extremely interesting story and how it kind of draws you in like you wish you could crack the code that this book holds, it's best to stay away from because it is said whoever is able to decipher the ending of this book will inevitably die two and a half years later, so is it really worth it? You don't even get a cool phone call to give you a heads up either. No girl coming out of the well, you just get me telling you on the internet, this is the worst sequel to The Ring ever. In our number one spot today, we have the Munich Manual. Also referred to as the Necromancer's Manual, this grimoire comes to us from the 15th century and is a text that is largely focused on demonology and necromancy. A lot of grimoires have both good and dark magic, but this is one that focuses solely on the dark black magic. There are three different sections to this one. The first section deals with illusionist magic and spells that trick people into seeing things that aren't there. The next is psychological magic, which is meant to use emotions, politics, and things like that in order to gain power over another individual. And if these two weren't scary enough, the third section is divinatory spells, which are meant to allow the reader to see into the past, present, or future. One of the most well-known parts of this book is the part that includes instructions on how to make the Mirror of Lilith, which is for the purpose of divination we just talked about. All right, this book seems to be a favorite amongst murderers at number 10. We have The Catcher in the Rye, which you shouldn't read unless you want to go mad. Oddly, The Catcher and the Rye seem to 
inspire two very high profile shootings, the murder of John Lennon and the attempted murder of Ronald Reagan. John Lennon was shot dead on the 8th of December 1980 by Mark David Chapman. The lone gunman from Texas was found to be obsessed with JD Salinger's novel and was found calmly reading it on a curb nearby his attack on Lennon prior to his arrest. It seems he wrote his statement inside the novel too. He felt like if he carried out the assassination he would become Holden Caulfield, the protagonist of the novel. Five months later on March the 30th 1981, John Hinckley carried out an assassination attempt on the 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. It seems that Hinckley's motivation was a weird attempt to win over actress Jodie Foster, whom he had an obsession with. When Hinckley was caught, he was found with a copy of none other than The Catcher in the Rye. Coming in at number 9 we have The Orphan Story. This story was written by a Malaga monk between 1608 and 1615. Now it's about an orphan from Granada who travelled to the Spanish Empire to seek his fortune. For some reason, the transcript never made it to print and everyone that seemed to be associated with it died. The manuscript was lost for centuries, some say hidden away because of the curse. Then a string of publishing attempts failed and people just started dying. The book however is to be finally published. Belinda Palacios, a Peruvian editor, said that she was regularly warned off the project because of the string of untimely deaths associated with the book. She said it's taken a while because the people who have worked on it died from one strange disease or in car accidents. I think that this is one book that I would steer clear of. Ok, this book may kill you but not because of demons or devils but because of cancer. Wait, a book that gives you cancer? Awful. That's right, coming in at number 8 we have Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. When Bradbury's 1953 book about a dystopian future came out, the marketing team had a wise idea. The book is about a group of so called firemen who burn down the homes and belongings of people who read illegal, non state approved books. Wouldn't it be cool for the limited edition books to be fireproof? It sure would. The only issue was that people didn't know what was what in the 1950s and the book was bound with asbestos. You know, the substance that gives you lung cancer. Not great. So while the book in itself is a bit of a scary read, the reality of the book is even scarier. In our number 7 spot today we have The Grand Omar. This novel is an 11th century collection of poetry that was written by Omar Khayyam, but it's not what's inside of this book that holds to the curse. In 1912, a bookbinder is said to have given this book lavish embellishments. There was silver, mahogany, ivory, leather, and over 1050 jewels including ruby, garnet, topaz, turquoise, and gold. He took such care with this book that it actually took him two years to finish and in 1912 is when he finished. Once finished, there was some trouble selling it, I mean the book was extremely expensive now. The binder decided to ship it from the UK to the US for a chance to have an easier time selling it, but then there was a mix up at customs and the book was shipped back to London. From here it is said that the book finally sold, but it was only for half the original price. The book binder once again had to ship the book overseas, but this time, guess which ocean liner the book ended up on? The ill fated Titanic of course. It is said that this original copy was never retrieved from the wreckage, but when the book was recreated, more strange things began to happen surrounding it. During World War II it was said to be placed in a vault in London, but it ended up being ruined in a blitz. The vault itself was fine, but somehow the book inside, aside from the jewels, was completely turned to ash. In our number 6 spot today we have The Book of the Sacred Magic of Abram Ellen the Mage. This book was of course created by Abram Ellen, who was indeed a mage, and he created it as a gift for his son. In the early 1900s this book was translated into English and that is when the rumors of the book being cursed began to spread. I mean this book contained spells but it also contained curses so I feel like that rumor likely makes a lot of sense. It is said that this rumor has to do with Abramelin's belief that everyone has their own personal demon. I'm just hoping that mine is like cool and nice. Those who have had bad experiences with the book explained either bad luck or hauntings from the spirit world are what await for those who dare to read it. In our number 5 spot today we have The Grand Grimoire. This book is often referred to as the book with incredible power and has been called one of the darkest books in the world. While the author of this book is still unknown, the contents of it are things like black magic and dark spooky secrets. It is believed that the book was written sometime around 1521 and it is split into two books. Book 1 details instructions on how to summon a demon and how to get a demon to do your bidding. The second book is split into two parts and it details how to make a pact with a demon 
demon and how to command the spirit, but with less tools, which means it is significantly riskier than the instructions in the first book. Apparently, in the book, it even details how someone can call upon Lucifer or the devil. So I guess who needs those 10 missing pages in the Codex Gigas? Just go out and get the grand grimoire and you're right back in the devil summoning game. The book describes a few different demons and it also gives spells that one can do for things like winning the lottery, there's love spells, becoming invisible, you know, the things that people want. While those spells certainly sound nice, magic like that always comes at a cost. People fear the grand grimoire because they worry that if anyone reads it fully, then the devil will enslave their soul. No thank you. In our number 4 spot today we have the Book of Soiga. Anything that is referred to as the Book of Death is definitely one I'll most likely spend my time trying to stay away from. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that is the least inviting thing I've ever heard in my life. If you don't agree with me on that sentiment however, the tough thing with this one is that nobody knows exactly what language it is written in. The beginning part of the book definitely contains some spells and incantations, but the ending of the book is really where the mystery lies and trying to decipher it is no easy feat. It is said that a scholar called John D once attempted to decode the secret book and it was so difficult that he needed to call on the angel Uriel for help. Even the angel didn't have the answers and instructed John to call on the archangel Michael who would be the only one who was able to interpret the text. Here's where the mystery gets more mysterious though. After John D passed away in 1608, the book basically just vanished and no one knew where it went. But then, like magic, it just reappears in the 19th century. Despite this extreme interesting story and how it kind of draws you in like you wish you could crack the code that the book holds, it's best to stay away from it because it is said whoever is able to decipher the ending of the book will inevitably die two and a half years later. So is it really worth it? It's like a prequel to The Ring. In our number 3 spot today we have the Munich Manual. Also referred to as the Necromancer's Manual, this grimoire comes to us from the 15th century and is a text that is largely focused on demonology and necromancy. A lot of grimoires have both good and dark magic, but this is one that focuses solely on the dark black magic. There are three different sections to this one. The first section deals with illusionist magic and spells that trick people into seeing things that aren't there. The next is psychological magic, which is meant to use emotions, politics, and things like that in order to gain power over another individual. And if those two weren't scary enough, the third is divinatory spells, which are meant to allow the reader to see into the past, present, or future. One of the most well-known parts of this book is the part that includes instructions on how to make the mirror of Lilith, which is for the purpose of the divination we just talked about. In our number two spot today, we have the Lesser Key of Solomon. This is a grimoire that is said to be cursed. It is said to contain spells that are used for summoning over over 72 different demons, and just to add a little air of mystery, no one is exactly sure who wrote it. This is because the book is made up of a few different texts that have been compiled from somewhere around the 17th century. This book is said to be so cursed that even having a copy of it will cause the owner to either experience constant bad luck or have the worst luck of all with passing away. People have shared their terrifying stories with the book and they include the book's pages turning on their own, and another person shared that the book violently threw itself across across the room at them. How terrifying would that be? Well, we aren't sure who wrote it. There have been rumors or stories that suggest it might have been King Solomon. It is said that perhaps he wrote it for his son and then asked him to bury it with him in his grave. When being prepared for burial, a group of Babylonian philosophers found the book, and this is when they were visited by an angel who told them to hide the book from the unworthy. They then placed a spell on the book which was meant to keep it from getting into the wrong hands, and that is said to be how the book got its curse. In our number one spot today, we have the orphan story. This is a book that was originally written in the 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The orphan story is about a 14 year old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. It's supposed to be like a classic coming of age feel good story, but it is not exactly and that is exactly the reason why it took so long for it to be published. The curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, however, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, Years, explained that throughout the years she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they were able to finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who tried to edit the book before either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily, Belinda somehow made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted. Either way, I don't think I'm gonna read this one. I don't know. 
You know, it's up to you though. If you want to, go ahead and let us all know. Starting off this countdown, we have The Sorrows of Young Werther. This book has been famously associated with something referred to as the Werther effect because of the negative impact it had on readers. So this book came out in 1774 and it inspired a huge wave of people taking their lives. It was a terrible epidemic. That's how strong the influence had on its readers. So young men started to copy the main character in the book. They would dress the same as he was portrayed in the book, and then later would take their own lives the way that he did in the book. This caused the book to be banned in countries such as Denmark and Italy. It was so bad that people believed this book was cursed, and every young man that read it will soon be tempted to take their own life, even if they were in the right mindset. In our number 9 spot today we have The Orphan's Story. This book was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The Orphan's Story is about a 14 year old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. You know, a classic coming of age feel good story, right? Well, not exactly, and that is the reason it took so long for it to be published. While the curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, explained that throughout those years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they were able to finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who tried to edit the book before either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted? Either way, it's probably one I'll personally stay away from. Moving on at number 8 we have The Lesser Key of Solomon. The Lesser Key of Solomon is a cursed grimoire that is said to contain summoning spells for over 72 demons, and no one knows who wrote it. What we do know though is that this book contains a bunch of compiled texts from the 17th century. Some of these texts tell the reader how to conjure and control spirits or demons. This book is apparently so cursed that anyone who keeps a copy of it will die or experience constant bad luck. One person who owned a copy of the book reported the book's pages turning on its own. Another time, the book violently flew across the room and towards them. Although we don't know who wrote the book, legend has it that King Solomon originally wrote it for his son. He then asked him to be buried with it. But apparently, when he was getting prepared for burial, a group of Babylonian philosophers found the book, and one of them got a vision from an angel. The angel told him to hide the book from the unworthy, so he decided to cast a spell on it to keep it from getting into the wrong hands. And that's how the book got cursed. Number 7. The Orphan Story Getting your books published is always the hardest part, right? At least that's what the internet says. I've never written a book. Not yet. In this case, it's next to impossible. The Orphan Story was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until as recent as 2018. Quite the delay if you ask me. Now the tale itself, in its pages, it's a classic coming of age tale. A boy travels across the world, tries some new cheese or spaghetti, it's nice. Certainly nicer than the Devil's Codex, right? But the real life history surrounding the publication process is what's cursed here. The book's 2018 publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, she explained that throughout those two years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before in the past ended up dying in a tragic way, shape, or form. Some sort of final destination type accident, right? Before they could finish publishing the book. So when Belinda looked into this, it turned out it was all true. Her research showed that those who had tried to edit the book before her either found themselves in horrible accidents or with a strange illness. One of the two. Now luckily, Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted. Number six. Untitled. The best tracks on rap albums are always the ones that are titled Untitled. You know what I mean? Kendrick's entire album, I'm like, you get the idea. The Untitled Grimoires are a set of handwritten spell books that were sold online for $14,000. This was back in 2013. Also, pretty good price, may I add, for what's about to come. The books were written a long time ago by a high priestess, the leader of a coven, and they included spells, incantations, enchantments, and instructions on summoning spirits and demons. All the good stuff. 30 pages or less, here we go. The seller of the books warned that any non-believer who messes with the book will bring upon themselves a deadly curse. And on the first page of the book, the priestess herself wrote that proceeding with the book may have serious consequences. It literally says, to, it literally says, quote, 
To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution. And you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. Yeah, the craft. We love that. So if you love buying old books for thousands of dollars, maybe avoid the untitled grimoires. Yeah, go with something a bit more, you know, titled. A more jazzy grimoire. I don't know. I'm gonna go get a grimoire after work. I'm gonna go try one out. A nice 700 pound book made of dust. Number five, the book of black magic and pacts. This one has an author that isn't a demon, which is nice, how fun is that? Off to a better start. The Book of Black Magic and Pacts was written by A.E. Waite. It covers lore, magic, cult history, and ceremonies. This book has been referred to as one of the greatest overviews of occultism, and it includes a large number of magical spells from a large number of sources. The book is also said to contain rituals of black magic. This is like... Don't touch this kind of stuff, right? How many X-Men comics do we need? Stop reading these books. The author of this book, A.E. Waite, uh, apparently he was a British poet as well. Nice, we love that. I love a good haiku, especially when it's about cults. Number four, the Picatrix. This is a grimoire, of course, that is said to contain a large amount of magic that is presumed to be from the 11th century. We're not exactly sure. The pages contain some philosophy, astrology, and even some medieval science, which at first sounds cool, but these sciences are really just recipes for concoctions that involve mixing human and animal DNA. Like mixing urine and opium. You know, stuff like that where nobody should be really reading or trying any of it. The results were promised to be Magical, but I'm far from convinced. This is really gross. This one definitely isn't the darkest or the spookiest on the list, which is a nice little refresher as we get to our grimoire ending here. And while some of the contents in this book is definitely historically interesting, I guess, I think it's probably best to you know, just stay away from magic and spells in general. Number three, Sorrows of Young Werther. We've got a lot of books on this list that are said to contain magic and spells and incantations. That's a fun word that I've said about 1100 times already. This one here is a little different from the others on this list because it doesn't have any of those spells in it. No, this is a book that came out in 1774 and it's said to have a large and negative impact on its readers since its release. So. Apparently after this book came out, a huge wave of its readers ended up taking their own lives because of the strange and dark contents that were in the book. Young men would start to emulate the main character of the book by dressing like him and then acting like him before ultimately following his dark actions in the book as well. This actually led to the book being banned in some countries, which here I can agree with. Yeah, something's clearly off here. It's believed that even people who were in a healthy place mentally prior to reading the book would still be tempted to follow that dark path after reading it. Hence, cursed, right? Yeah, grab Game of Thrones, skip Sorrow of Young Werther, please. Also reach out if you have any dark thoughts. That's much easier than renting a demonic codex. Number two, the book of the sacred magic of Abramella and the Mage. A little wordy for a title, in my opinion, but here we go. When you're an expert in magic, you probably don't give the same sort of gifts that the non-magical folks do, right? You're like, hey, here's a Rubik's Cube, I guess. So it's no surprise that Abram Mellon gifted his son a book of spells and curses, right? Just some Doctor Strange stuff right there. The classic Malfoy method, five points to Slytherin. There we go, the learning young. In the early 1900s, this book was translated into English, and ever since then, there've been rumors swirling that the book is cursed. I mean, its source material is literally curses, so uh, yeah, that checks out. Rumor has it that the cursed nature of this book, in part, has to do with Abram Mellon's belief that everybody has their own personal demon. This book holds instructions on how to get your demons under control by, you know, reaching out to the spirit world. Yeah, if you're trying to quit smoking, don't read Abram Mellon's magical book. You know, stick to Nicorette. I think that's safer. I think it's safer. Unless you absolutely know what you're doing, the contents of this book might just be too powerful to handle, my friend. Those who've had bad experiences with the book explained either bad luck or hauntings soon followed. But they quit smoking, so hey, who knows? And finally, number one, the Munich Manual. Also referred to as the Necromancer's Manual, this grimoire comes to us from the 15th century and is a text that is largely focused on demonology and of course, necromancy. A lot of grimoires have both good and dark magic, but this is one that focuses solely on the dark, horrible black magic aspect, as you could have guessed. There are three different sections to this one. The first section deals with illusionist magic and spells that trick people into seeing things that aren't there. Some kind of Loki magic, right? The next is psychological magic, which is meant to use emotions or politics and things like that in order to gain power over an individual. So, Professor X, let's say. And the third section details instructions on how to make the Mirror of Lilith. Yeah, this mirror has you looking younger than ever. Once properly constructed, the user can then see into the past, present, or future. Just Professor X again. 